What if your organs could fix themselves in a matter of minutes or seconds? A couple years ago, I found myself at a mill sitting next to someone who was starting to become a surgeon. We had lots of interesting conversations that night, but one conversation in particular kind of <laughs> dominated that night. It started off with a conversation with him and myself, and um, a couple of his friends ended up chiming in. It was very, very interesting. And it started like this. I basically asked him the question. I said, does he really think that we're going to need surgeons and surgery soon? Will they be necessary? Obviously, his opinion that was that they would be needed. And so I posed to him this question. And I, I asked him, imagine if you could have a world post-surgery where we didn't have to cut up your body to get inside to repair your body. Imagine if we could repair your body from within. If we could build things to augment your immune system and your organs and repair them on the fly. Imagine if you could have quote unquote, what's called a surgery nowadays. Imagine if you could have a micro surgery or a nano surgery as you were walking to work or as you were going to get your coffee. Now we obviously had talked about Da Vinci and the machines over there and what surgeons get. And he had asked me, he had, he had said basically, if we still have surgeries, we'll need humans to take care of you. So this was the argument from his side. The reason we need surgeons and the reason we need surgery, and the reason we need doctors, and, and this whole complex that we have today, is because primarily after the surgery, he wasn't really arguing that we that the surgery itself will be needed, because he agreed that we have robots like Da Vinci that will get better and better and better. But he said there's going to be a whole healing process, and we need humans to sit by you when you want. He's like, I don't want to wake up and have a robot take care of me, and that's when I posed that to him, and I said, Well, what happens if we're talking about a world? Well, we don't even have that surgery. We don't even go through that process of having to be cut off. Imagine if we had our bodies fixed from within. Now, I think there are a couple steps over here. I'm gonna outline three general steps. Today we're in, let's say step one. Let's call it step one. We're in the organ transplant phase where we've found ways to take organs from someone, usually from someone recently deceased, um, and we've found a way of matching them up and being able to transplant them into your body. Now this whole process is really expensive, really time consuming, really risky. Um, and that's not to say after all this that your body won't reject it. It's, the average kidney transplant is about $300,000. Printing a kidney using today's technology on a, in a 3D printer is about $10,000 for the material. So, 3D printing, or 3D bioprinting specifically, is the next step, right? It's this step that we're going to start printing out organs. And we're not there yet, right? There's lots of research being done into this, and there's lots of, lots of things, lots of hurdles, lots of challenges that we still need to get through. But let me take you through a couple of them. So in 2011, they printed, up, they, they printed a, a kidney. Now, I think it was that TED talk that I'd seen this that had prompted this conversation. I think I'd just seen that recently. And um, from, that, from, from, from that concept of being able to 3D print organs, it got me obsessed with this concept of 3D printing organs, of the future of healthcare. That's where I kind of got into all these other videos that I've touched in healthcare. I think it kind of stemmed from there with nanobots and things like that. Uh, but 3D printing organs was a huge, really cool thing. And from then I was like, what happens if you could 3D printed inside the body. That's step three, but we're just gonna pause on step two right now. So 3D printing, so already just printing out the organ is a huge cost reduction. Time wasting, right? As of, I think it was February 2020, there was about 112,000 people waiting for an organ transplant in the US alone. And about 20 people die every single day waiting for an organ. And that's to say that you've got the money for it. You're finally waiting, you finally found the match, and your body doesn't reject it, so you're the lucky one at the end of the day that comes out of that, this whole process of this long, drawn out, expensive, risky process. So we've got this next concept, right? Which is that 3D printing, which is, let's not have all that transplant. Let's be able to completely 3D print your organ. 
Uh, and then we essentially transplant, but we put that into your body, right? We take out the old one and we replace it. Now, it's much cheaper. Um, you have a very, a much, much lower chance of your body actually rejecting it because your this organ is printed with your own cells, right? So the structure of, so you had the kidney was printed in, I think it was like something like 2011. You had a couple years later, or very commonly, they print out ears nowadays as like prosthetics. Um, 2019, a group of researchers in Tel Aviv printed out like a fully functional cherry-sized heart. Now, obviously, these things are not, I, they're not organs that you're going to put into a human body like tomorrow. But they're showing us the very, very beginnings of how do we actually do that. There's different methods of how to print out, right? Just very briefly, you've got two main concepts of 3D printing just generally. You've got uh, printing in layers, right? Very, very thin slices of layers that just get, um, it's called additive manufacturing. Uh, you print on top and you end up with your item. Or you print in a resin and you hard, harden certain parts of it. There's concepts of that used in 3D printing where they've actually printed out blood vessels because imagine printing out all these intricate blood vessels inside of a heart and do that layer by layer, that's very complicated. So they use the concept of the resin to be able to harden certain parts and then you end up with a gel inside and you flush that out and you end up with the, with the, 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 the blood veins uh, <laughs> that you're able to send blood through. Anyways, there's lots of work being done and lots of work that still needs to be done. But we can imagine a world soon where just taking our DNA, taking a bunch of cells, we can start printing even the membrane, even the, uh, the structure beforehand, and then we use your cells to coax in and build themselves around it and start constructing the organ around it going inside that. So that's, that's a very, very, very simple way, right? And a lot of this is beyond me. Um, but there is going to be a time, not so far in the future, where organ printing is going to be something that's going to be quite common. This is going to save tons and tons of lives. It's going to make, at the risk of repeating myself, it's going to save so much money, it's going to be able to make it more accessible. The risk is going to go very, very down. The risk, the time you're waiting uh, is going to go very, very down. Just briefly, just to talk about medicine, specialized medicine or personalized medicine, uh, using your DNA is going to become something huge soon. You're not going to go to a pharmacy and just uh, get anything off the, off the shelf. You're actually going to have your DNA, whether it's going to be in a profile or whatnot, and you're going to have a, a drug that's going to be printed for you, or it's going to start in groups of groups that you share with, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people, and then as these prices drop down, you're going to get more and more personalized. Too soon, this drug, this vaccine, this... Um, this medicine, whatever it is, will be personalized to you. So the side effects are going to be essentially nil at a point. But just coming back to organs. So that's the second stage, right? The second stage is 3D printing the organs. We're not waiting until that organ comes from another human being or even an, or even an animal, or like a pig or something that's close enough that can replicate or be very close to our organs. And we do do those uh, transplants. So that concept, and just very, very briefly, not to go into another direction, the idea of cloning, and people are so scared that we're gonna clone to harvest organs, 3D printing is going to get rid of that fear. We're not going to worry about that. Um, if we can drive down the price and, and this research can go uh, much, much further. The third stage is what I was talking to him about. Was if you think about those, like 3D printers, they can be they can, they can be on your desktop or they can be the size of a building, right? We've found different ways of 3D printing houses. So 3D printing organs can be pretty much just built around the size of an organ. But you can even... Think about shrinking that so small that the scaffolding of the actual printer is really, really, really small or even constructed inside of your body on the fly and just prints around it. So whether it, if there's a hole, things like that, obviously this is very, very complicated and it's not something that's going to be done at the drop of a hat. But I'm just asking you to imagine a point in the future where we literally reprint uh, cells or reprint, reprint complete organs inside of your body, around, inside, and, and make miniature surgeries that can be done as you walk. At that stage, and, and that is much more, more complicated than I can fit into this video, but just imagine that, that there will be a time that we'll walk down the street to Starbucks, in a, and in that time, if there's a problem, it's going to be fixed, and we're not even gonna know about it. That's crazy, and that's going to happen <laughs> soon. Maybe not in two years, but it's going to happen. Anyways, uh, there's a lot more in healthcare and it's a crazy, crazy field that's gonna become even crazier. But I'm gonna have to say for now that I will see you guys in the future.